if you're in Seattle, pretty normal to like hang out with your friends and maybe cuddle with them, maybe even shower with them. I have platonic friends that I- Just to be clear, I seriously doubt that's normal, even in Seattle, that you cuddle and shower with platonic friends. That sounds like something only a girl would say. <laughs> There's no shot. Those guys that are cuddling and having showers with you are so deep in the friend zone, okay? They're digging razor blades out of their closet. No shot. I, mean, I can give you feedback if you want. I just don't know if you, want, you really want to do that. It's up to you. Wait. It sounds you not like, agree? Like right now, if would I wanted you? to call Dan and be like, Dan, we should go. You, do you want to go out to dinner tonight? We can get a few drinks. It'll be fun. That'd be like cool. And we could chat. It'd be fun. And me and Dan would just have fun. But if I said that to a girl that I'd fuck. That's a date. You're going out, you're consuming mind-altering substance, you're outside at night, walking around, chatting, you're probably walking pretty close to you, you're probably holding hands more often than not. Like, how is this not, how are you like, oh, I don't know, I just don't even see it as if that you, type of thing. That's what he would say when he was single, like. That answer, Darius, if we're being truthful, that answer is not honest as well, right? I assume they were living together if I didn't know otherwise, based on how he talks about his son. They live in completely different states. He has not made parenting content with the F. Um, again, he like uses it as a point of authority when people in podcasts are like, oh, you're a dad, right? You're a father. Yeah, I have a son. God, there are so many unbelievably mean comments I can make about her and her health and everything. And I just, I'm... That's, that's saying I'm speaking as a father but like if your father left and never came back home do you have a dad can you just please outline your cry. position please well my position is obviously that it is obviously an unhealthy relationship for a variety of reasons um but we'll see wanted did I want poly did I want monogamy did I want uh, religious, secular, did I want queer, straight? Did I, what did I want? I had to really ask like who I was. And to be honest, I had to date pretty messily and I had to have pretty toxic relationships for me to grow out of these stages. But I remember thinking something that I see reflected sort of in Xena and like, again, major props to her for coming out and talking about her relationships. But it's this idea of this is what I can get. And I think I had this mindset of, this is what I was going to get and this was pretty good and somebody finally saw a part of me that no one had seen before but it wasn't really a healthy relationship it was more of a settling into what was available and what I could have at the moment because of who I was if you're dating toxic you probably have toxicity within you if your relationship is dysfunctional you probably have to look at yourself it's very easy to blame our partners and to say like well my partner is the dysfunctional one and that's why I'm in a toxic relationship but the truth is is that I think in order to stay in that relationship a part of you has to be dysfunctional and so I would argue that of course I had dysfunction within me of course I was in that relationship and in those relationships because I allow dysfunction to stay around me and so I want to watch these clips with you from this panel from not so erudite's channel again I love Kyla I love her work um, but again there's no one on this panel with a voice like mine that has gone from toxic to healthy and that did open and sees open as healthy and then is monogamous and does that healthily but also like I'm married I found my person, I did not settle. I waited my 30s to make sure that I was gonna choose somebody that was the right person and not just settle into a relationship that was conveniently available. So again, I wanna give you exactly what you want from a relationship and in order to do that, you first have to realize that you have so much power in your life. You have so much power in your life. And so until you realize that, I think you will always settle for something that is less than. Until you realize how much power you have, you might always settle into something that is less than. So let's watch these three clips together. I've got um, put together, and then I've got a little bit of a doc Dr. Kirkonda clip I want to show you too. Because Dr. Kirkonda, if you guys watch his work on uh, YouTube, he's very self-aware about healthy polyamorous. And I would say if you're an internet influencer person, I would be very, 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 very careful when you give your relationship as a qualifier for how you can give advice to other people online. I think giving relationship experience is valid. We should always very carefully couch it in that way because relationships can fail. So for instance, I've been in plenty of long-term relationships. I've been married twice, um, or am married once, so I was married in the past, right? But I, I would be very hesitant to say like, oh, well, 
I know all about this because I have a relationship with Melina and I'm married to my wife right now and that's so good and blah blah because I could get fuck who knows maybe we get into a huge fight we get divorced in a month or two and if you lose a relationship that we using you were using as like a credentialed thing to make a statement on something then you end up like Hunter Avalon or something or like people are gonna be like oh well now look everything you said was wrong because you got divorced like relationships fail um, what's the meaningful difference between the two um, because there's something to be said for, I think there's something to be said for experience. Somebody tells me that they've gone through like five, six, or seven long-term relationships or whatever. Okay, you've got some experience. You can tell me some things about what you like, what you don't like. If you're introspective, you can tell me why the relationships work, why they didn't work. Um, but if you're like, oh, well, I'm in a good relationship right now. It's like, okay, bitch, <laughs> your relationship got it tomorrow. You don't know that. Who knows, right? Um, especially if it's a new relationship. I would just say, always be careful. Um, yeah, just always be careful with, with, citing something as a credential when it could disappear tomorrow or the day after, you know? Why talk about your relationship like it's going to end? I'm not, I'm not, I don't, okay. Do you agree with Brittany here? Should you really strive for perfect relationships and avoid settling when you are young? Um, I mean, you shouldn't strive for something perfect. Everybody settles to some extent. Her saying that she didn't settle as a cope or a lie. Um, the reality is, is that like, there's not gonna be a, well, actually, I guess it depends on how you view it. There's a, there's a, there's a cute, there's a cute commercial I remember hearing on the radio like 20 years ago or something, trying to get people to adopt kids. And it was something, it was like the dad was like, oh, like uh, I, I think he, like, he woke up late or he did something that was fucked up or something. I don't remember. He just did some goofy shit or whatever. He had fun with this kid. And then the guy comes on and it's like, you don't have to be a perfect person to be a perfect parent. And it's like, yeah, like people aren't perfect. People mess up, people make mistakes, but you can still have like really good unions between people. Um, this is actually a, it's a conundrum that I've been in personally. Um, I know at least one friend that's going through this right now, and I've had conversations with a lot of people about this. I don't know what is the correct degree of settling for relationships, but you're never gonna find a relationship where everything is perfect. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, and I don't even know what would be perfect. Like, would a perfect person for me be somebody that does politics, loves video games, wants to live in Miami, um, is progressive or conservative so we can argue, um, like has like wants to be open, um, speak Spanish like I do. <laughs> but like, it's hard, like I could probably list like 10 or 15 really important parts of my personality and then say like, I need somebody to match on every single one of those. I don't even know if that would be the perfect relationship. And then you can start taking away from them. And like, would that be a, um, is that a worse relationship? Like, I don't know, it's really hard to say, right? So like, in some cases, so if I look at Melina, for instance, there are some major whoo, misses that me and Melina have. Um, the first one, hugely, is age, which is really important to me. Um, Melina's just getting really old now. She's 25, okay? I could be with a 19-year-old baddie, and I've got this, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, one of the big mismatches is age. Um, typically the women that I tend to get along with and keep as long-term friends and get along really well romantically tend to be closer to my age. So Melina is quite a bit off that and that's a, that she can never catch up there, right? She can never catch up in age unless we do some relativity travel faster than the light bullshit. Um, we also have a huge miss in hobbies, right? Melina doesn't play video games at all. She doesn't debate or argue politics at all. Um, so th like those are two, those would be two A, S tier mismatches in my life in terms of things that I would want out of a partner. But me and Melina have really good romantic chemistry. She's the only person that I've been with that for over a year or two, generally for whatever reason, I start to tune out romantically in terms of how I feel about someone and I start to get like kind of indifferent. Um, I don't feel that way about Melina at all. That's arguably one of the most important bedrocks for me for a relationship. And after five years, I still super love seeing her, love hugging her, love cuddling her, love, like all of that stuff is super high, just as high as the first day we met, if not more. So that's a really important part. Um, I also consider Melina to be a really emotionally intelligent person and even a conventionally intelligent person. Um, for somebody that was, uh, you know, whatever hippie druggy girl in a van, um, she manages all of her social media and employees and everything right now really well. She adapted to a totally new environment and now um, does exceedingly well in managing all of her platforms. So that's like a pretty big match. Um, but it's not conventionally intelligent in the like, do you want to debate micro biology or some random cock bullshit. So yeah, I, I just don't, even when I look at my own relationship, it's hard to say like, what is settling? Like, did I settle for Melina because I didn't find like, somebody that overlaps in every single area. That's also a weird thing too, because it's like, let's say I found somebody that overlaps in 13 or 14 different areas. I could always find theoretically a better matched partner, right? Same thing with Melina. What if Melina found somebody that was just like me, but they also really liked hiking, right? That, theoretically, that's a better partner for her. Or what if she found somebody just like me, but they also, um, 
I don't know, they read all the Lord of the Rings books and they memorized all the Lord of the Rings lore, or they really liked traveling more, you know? Um, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm just pun pontificating? I'm not even, I'm, I'm just like asking questions. I don't really know what the right answers are here for anything. There's, like I said, I've, there's a couple of friends that I've spoken to about this, and I, um, I, I truly don't know what the right answer is for what is considered settling or not. There's gonna be like a threshold for once you reach a certain threshold, you can make a relationship work. The important thing is probably just to identify what that threshold is and then any partner past that is golden, I think. Open relationships. He's very self-aware about sex positivity. He's very self-aware about sex workers. On uh, YouTube, he's very self-aware about healthy polyamory. What is she, then. So let's People watch say don't settle when together. marriages seemingly have failed. How can someone say that a new partner is truly what they want and is ideal when they haven't even spent an extended period of time with them? Yeah, you don't know if your partner is the one for, I'd imagine living together for at least six to six to 12 months. That'd be my guess, but. I've got um, put together and then I've got a little bit of a doc Dr. Kirkonda clip I want to show you too. Because Dr. Kirkonda, if you guys watch his- I tried watching the part of that FD signifier shit. He's just really stupid. I don't know what, to, what, what else to say. Like I said, I watched some of this off stream and I got up to the part where he's like, I brought in experts to talk about like the prison thing. And the first expert he brings in, it's just like prison all abolitionist. All of us need to be looking at a, a, a just, versus having to actually do the work. Like all of the, everything this guy says is just empty platitudes and it's nothing. He says nothing. The first five minutes is like obsessing over some prison that exists in Georgia, Atlanta, that's in the middle of the city. And I guess that's really upsetting to him because it's near a graffiti wall. I super don't give a f This guy has never said anything interesting or thought-provoking to me in my entire life. Uh, maybe we'll watch it later if I'm really bored, but I don't know. It's just, ugh. Work on uh, YouTube, he's very self-aware about healthy polyamorous and open relationships. He's very self-aware about sex positivity. He's very self-aware about sex workers. He's very self- He's so educated in terms of alternative bubbles, even though he isn't in an alternative bubble. He's monogamous. He's, he's not, you know, all of these things. He is somebody who's so aware of it and knows the difference between healthy poly and toxic poly. Just because you're poly doesn't mean you're healthy. So many people in poly and open relationships think like I'm better than the monogamous people because I'm open and modern, but like you're just as toxic as your baby boomer parents. And so there's something to be said there. Just for clarification, I see a comment that says, would an erudite be an example of healthy? Uh, healthy monogamous and religious couple, so different. So yes, obviously Kyla's relationship with Nick is great and I'm not criticizing that relationship, but I think it's hard for somebody in that bubble to explain to somebody in Zena's bubble uh, her options, right? Because Zena, like no offense, if I was Zena, I wouldn't care so much what a religious monogamous person has to say about their relationship. I would wanna know from somebody who's doing what I'm doing. And the fact that she references like destiny as like an example of a relationship that works that's open. I don't know if I would argue that that's working because you shouldn't be having like fights with your partners. You shouldn't be cheating on them. You shouldn't be lying to them or deceiving them. So again, you can do those things. You're Just as a heads up. And again, I understand because Brittany is very new into her relationship. So she's probably still honeymooning hard as she packs up and moves to a whole other country and uproots her entire life. Um, the, uh, to say that like a relationship's not working because there's fighting is, is a really absurdly stupid <laughs> statement, but okay. Um, but again, I don't know if I would ever cite my relationship as like a model or an example. There are a ton of things revolving around my life that make my life pretty exceptional, uh, just an exception to the rule, not like in a good or bad way, but just there's a lot of except in terms of what I do for content, in terms of my history and everything else, um, that I, don't, I would be very reticent to cite any part of my life as a model for anybody else. But I've also said that a million times too. allowed to have exactly the relationship you want including a toxic one you're allowed to continue dating a person or being with a person who like cheats on you or disrespects you or lies to you or breaks your trust you're allowed to make it work you're allowed to go to also i think i don't remember if we learned this or not but Brittany has definitely been cheated on in the past and it has definitely been a major formation part of her <laughs> history as well and her current view of the world because she has like ultra lurking trauma relating to anything around like lying or cheating, which to be fair, lying and cheating in relationships is definitely a bad thing and can be a good indicator to end a relationship as well. But she's like obsessively, like Reddit tier obsessed with these things. Yeah. Couples counseling, you're allowed to do whatever you want, but I personally feel like you shouldn't, if you're gonna reference like healthy polyamorous or open couples, you should probably actually reference people who are poly and not people who are just open. And then you should probably know the differences between these words. Like the amount of that this bubble on YouTube interchangeably uses these words does give me a lot of anxiety because like, 
it's like you're um culturally appropriating a totally alternative community that has these words and they mean something like there's books written on this there's conferences done on this there's studies that are done on alternative relationships but then the reason why people i'll even do this the reason why people group poly and um the reason why people group poly and open relationships together is because they're non-monogamous. It's like monogamous and non-monogamous relationships or alternative relationships. Like, I think for the part, if I'm talking to a normal person, um, I'm just going to say like monogamous or non-monogamous. I'm not going to sit there and spell out the difference between like open and poly to somebody that has limited experience in alternative relationships. There's like, there's just no point. It's a waste of time. Water never runs out in this game, right? No, there's no way. That would be ridiculous. These people from the internet just, it's like they heard it one time and they're like, yeah, that's what I am. And I'm like, oh, okay, like, but it means something and it doesn't have to mean this. The reality too is that what poly and what open means, the boundaries are very, very, very fuzzy for a lot of people too, but. Same thing in your bubble, but then you're the alternative. You're the weird one. Why does she basically take your relationship for like two minutes? She's obsessively hates me for a variety of stupid reasons about a debate that we had a long time ago relating to drama and her inability to understand a book she read. But that's, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to this. Because you're not using it like the rest of the poly people. If you meet an actually poly person who's done poly traditionally, that means they're usually in many loves, multiple loving relationships that have some level of dedication to them. And it means something It's different from swingers and it's different from open and it's different from I'm single, but I have a situation ship. Situation ships are not polyamory. Monogamy is not polyamory. Open relationships aren't polyamory. You can be open and poly. You can be polyamory and do situation ships. But you see how these are all different. And again, I am super obsessed with categorization. So this is my- The super obsessed with categorization again like doesn't really work i don't think with poly and open stuff because again like i've met open people with all sorts of different boundaries i've met poly people with all sorts of different boundaries i don't think that you can draw a hard line between them i think there are some general things that you can say like the differences between like open and poly but um i don't think that to, to sit there and pretend like you can hardcore draw boundaries between one and the other i don't really think you can do that <clears throat> I get excited that there's so many ways to identify, but it could be overwhelming, but it also helps you find people who are like you. You know what I mean? So again, you have to realize that you can have what you want in life. You just gotta meet people that are identifying words similarly to you. So let's watch these clips before I get totally into it and start rambling. And then we'll, um, we'll start this. Okay, ready? So here we go. So this is, let me switch the screens here for you guys. Okay, so you are seeing uh, Airdite stream and the sound should be good. It's probably gonna be really loud because there's a lot of people on the panel. And I just wanna start here at this at this time stamp. This is 37 minutes in, and this is from, um, let me just, I'll tag the video in the chat so you guys can see it. I'm just, yeah, I just wanna differ. Her volume is like low, I, she's that, fixing I, it. I don't know, it's the same thing, bro. I just, I know what I want exclusively for me. True. This part, he can have set, he knows how to have set. True maybe without having her volume is super super low so just keep that in mind emotional attachment debatable what i'm considering is emotional and intimate is the things that he thinks is normal and that so right now what's happening just to give you guys a little bit of a catch me up Zena is having problems with Darius. If you guys know who Darius is, he's a little bit of a drama king on YouTube. He's a unique little snowflake. He's friends with Irrelevant and I love Relly. So like major, you know, interesting dynamics there. Cause I like, I, Darius makes me uneasy if I'm being honest with you. He's just uh -oh. a little too dysfunctional for me. A little too toxic um, boy for me. But the thing that's interesting is like, Zena is telling Darius, I would like romantic exclusivity with you. I don't care if you have sex with other women. I would like you to be only romantic with me. But Darius wants an open relationship where he's affectionate with his girlfriends or even a platonic affection Use with chainsaw? his female friends. He wants to cuddle them and make them mixtapes and do nice affectionate things with them, which again, if you're in Seattle, pretty normal to like hang out oh. with your friends and maybe cuddle with them, maybe even shower with them. I have platonic friends that I've- uh, Just to be clear, I seriously doubt that's normal, even in Seattle, that you cuddle and shower with platonic friends. That sounds like something only a girl would say. <laughs> I thought there's no shot. Those guys that are cuddling and having showers with you are so deep in the friend zone, okay? They're digging razor blades out of their closet. No shot. 
No shot. That is a um, that is a take from Britney's world. Jesus. Hello? What? Hello? Is everyone retarded but me, dude? Like, I'm not saying that I want to shower with my friends. Why do people keep getting this? Why do people keep saying this? And also, the Spotify blend link is not a playlist. It's not a mixtape. Do you, do you get that? Do you get that, at least? You... That's a... A lot going on there, Darius. Do you... Wait, do you not... Do you, do you not get that? A Spotify blend link being different than a mixtape. What, um... What part of this conversation do you want to have right now? Oh, my f God. Just, like... The interpretation that I just want to have, like... Oh, my... I, okay, never mind. Oh, I mean, I can give you feedback if you want. I just want to know if you want... You really want to do that. It's up to you. What? It sounds Do you not like, agree? Well, I mean, it sounds like you want something a little bit more romantic with the tricks that you hook up with. I mean, sure, but it's not that romantic. It's not like, like, sure, if that's the bar for romance, like, doing a Spotify blend link, like, sure, then I guess that's what I want. But, like, that's not, like... Connecting with like somebody on an emotional level that you also have sex with is almost always going to transcend just like a normal hookup, right? How many girls have you done this with that have gotten obsessed with you? Do you think that's an accident that it keeps happening over and over and over and over again? Well, it's been a couple or whatever, but it's like, I'm just saying, like, if I was to talk to, like, a new girl right now, like, a, a, like let's say this new person in my Discord is a chick, I start being, becoming friends with her, and she's like, hey, Darius, like, uh, what music do you like? And I send her a Spotify blend link or whatever, and I'm like, oh, we have a match there. That's cool. It's that's neat. fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're also doing it with a girl, you're also It's a little bit different now. Yeah, but it's like, I've, I've already done it with the girls I can say now. It's like... Yeah, but how many and how many of those girls are obsessed with you? Barely, like you know, two. Are you sure? Like two. At this moment, probably two. At this moment, okay, a little more honesty. All right. <laughs> okay, here, yeah, listen. This isn't something that I care to argue about because I'm just right. Okay, so th I'm just telling you my opinion, my perspective, and then if you don't agree with that, that's fine. But I'm telling you that like once you've started fucking somebody, your emotional connection is already ramped up like 35 different levels okay so you're already in a much higher place and then once you start the problem is um so here's something monogamoids won't admit okay but i compare friendships to relationships a lot but the reality is is friendships and relationships have a whole bunch of overlap that is true yes. people want to pretend like they're totally different than I. but once you've somebody and you start being friendly with them any friendly action that you do towards a person a person you can very easily be seen as a romantic action. Yeah. Like right now, if Would I wanted you? to call Dan and be like, Dan, we should go, do you want to go out to dinner tonight? We can get a few drinks, it'll be fun. That'd be like cool and we could chat and be fun. And me and Dan would just have fun. But if I said that to a girl that I'd fuck, that's a date. Easily that's a date. I've got a pretty romantic one if it's in Miami Beach, right? It's not just something yeah. to be aware of, you know? Yeah, but there's like this one girl, like I'm pretty sure this is something I get in trouble for from Dina. But like there's one girl I had sex with like two years ago that was like, she just checked up on me like three days ago. And then she was like, oh, do you want to go out for drinks or something like that? Just to like catch up. Like I have no problem doing that. That's fine. But I'm pretty sure like, that would be like romantic or affectionate just because we had sex like what, like two years ago. So and my, I this is just my personal thing. And I might just be a super coomer brain because I like to fuck. And I like to be romantic with people, blah, blah, blah. I've said this before, but in my opinion, drinks are always, basically any mind altering substance is an invitation for a very deep connection with a person. If I, like, if, like I said, if a girl asks me out for drinks, I'm assuming like we're 100%, unless I do something really stupid. So if I had um, a past buddy and then they message me like, hey, do you wanna go for drinks? I'm like, <laughs> I'm shaving, okay? Like we're gonna be doing stuff tonight. That, that, that would just be my search every time. Otherwise, why not? Because the, the platonic version of drinks is, what are you doing tomorrow morning? Do you want to go get like a coffee? That's like the platonic version of that. Drinks and then dinner, that's like way more, in my opinion. Yeah, I guess so. I just want, uh, yeah. I guess the context of this specifically is that she works morning and morning, so I can't like ask for coffee. No, there's, no. Yeah. she doesn't work seven but, days a week. That's not true. There is no shot. Well, coffee on like a Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. What's wrong with coffee on a Saturday or Sunday? Who does that? Who's a coffee shop on a Saturday? So who, what do you mean? I don't know what you're asking right now. I'm not sure. Well, no, no, that's like, it's like a morning day, like a thing before work or a thing before your classes. You go to like get coffee with someone. That's, that's what, am I wrong? I, I have no idea. Coffee to me is like a very casual get together. That's like, a, hey, do you want to go out for, get coffee? Go to Starbucks. I'll get a croissant. Yeah, so but we can chat. Do it. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Oh, listen, whatever. hey, listen, it's your, whatever you think, all right? Whatever you want to do, okay? 
Okay, okay. I'm just telling you. What I'm telling you is, I'm telling you my perspective, and I'm telling you how girls feel it. Okay? Because every single girl yeah. will agree yeah, with no, me that if you're asking a guy yeah. for drinks that you've had a past sexual history with, that's not just a whatever platonic get together. That's like, that's definitely something more. Absolutely. But. Okay. I can see how if you're saying just how girls would perceive it, I guess. Because I, I don't know. I don't perceive it that way at all. Like, I, I, I generally, when I go into a lot of these situations, even though it seems like I am, because I'm like, doing like sexual things on stream and like i'm also being like a little bit romantic i have i genuinely have no expectations for anything to happen um, having no expectations I is different than understanding the situation i don't have expectations of a girl i don't have expectations for anything even if i'm explicitly meaning a girl to fuck but i know what's on the menu right but there's a difference between having yeah. expectations versus yeah I, guess I usually think there's like something's on the menu if like it's very clear like we're gonna hang out by myself in my room or, but like, I guess like going out to for coffee, like that could be just- What is, okay, walk me through this. Now this is outside of my area of expertise, okay? I admit, okay, because I'm almost always when this happens, but walk me through going out for drinks with a girl. How does that night end without you guys Are you like, do you go out for drinks, you get tipsy drunk, and then you're just like, oh, okay, bye. And then you just like, you you leave when you're both still drunk. What does that look like to you? To you? Tell me, I'm so curious. So, so in a real sense, you we go to like this place called Cornish Bring Pats. Bring Labbacks of Destiny Pats, hates get, like, as much as we do. Maybe, or you get like something very light. Um, and then we go ahead, we talk outside of the the, the place, walk down the, sh the little area that is in Tempe for a little bit, talk about life, do whatever, walk by the light rail, and then we part ways. Okay, that sounds, like a, that sounds like a hella date. Am I crazy? I mean, it does kind of sound like a date, but it's is this like, at, I guess- Is like, it in the evening too? So evening, you're getting drinks, you're a little bit tipsy, you're walking around outside, like. It's like, uh, yeah, I get loosened up a little bit to talk about stuff that's not going on in life, but it's like not like there's an underlying like sexual, I guess there, I guess there is a little bit since we're opposite genders. Well, and you've already but fucked. Like, I, I, can, I guess since we already fucked, but like, I can, know, I can see myself doing this with like a guy friend as well, just like meeting up for drinks and then getting like Wait, a- Wait, how many times have you met a guy friend at night for drinks and then gone walking outside while chatting? To be, to be honest, I've, tr I've tried, but a lot of guys don't like doing that. Well, <laughs> like, probably that sounds like a date. That's not, I don't even think of, ah, dude, maybe I'm just like fucked in the head then. I just don't view it as like a day. I just view it as like a normal thing people do. They just go outside for drinks and then they talk about When stuff you outside. go outside and you are looking at people that are having drinks and walking with each other, how many of them are same sex couples? I've seen guys, guys go out in like groups. Groups, yeah. That's a totally different dynamic. Uh, I could totally see you inviting a group of friends out for drinks, and then you guys get tipsy, you have fun, you joke, you chill, and then at the end you separate ways. That's but groups are way different than that's if a girl DMs me and she's like, Hey, do you wanna go out for drinks? We're fucking that night. If a girl DMs me and she's like, Hey, do you wanna go out for drinks? I'm gonna bring some friends. In my mind, I'm like, Oh, this girl's like a platonic friend. Those are worlds apart of difference between being in a group setting versus a one on one setting, no? Uh, yeah, I just don't I guess I don't think of the gender portion of it too much because i can't How imagine do you not think are you bi i forget do you fuck dudes i, I am bi yes I'm, but i don't think of like a guy I even how like do you not gender like... this how is it not completely different i don't understand how the energy is not there for you're going out you're consuming mind-altering substance you're outside at night walking around chatting you're probably walking pretty close to you. you're probably holding hands more often than not like how is this not how are you like oh i don't know i just don't even see it as if that you, type you of wanna, thing I want to be like, for, I, I guess like with the group thing specifically, I've never had like a group of friends and like gone and done stuff. So it's always been like one-on-one -on -one with me and like a guy or like me and a girl. So I've always like relatively viewed them like the same, unless like it's like a girl, like specifically from like, let's say a dating app or something like that. that I'd be like, okay, like, yeah, we could probably, this could probably lead up to sex. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not gonna have expectations. We're just gonna go and hang out. But like, I don't really like hang out with like groups of people. So I don't really like think of like, okay, this is like, much different. Like if I'm gonna go hang out with a person, I'm specifically hanging out with that person with the group of people if they've invited me. So I usually still, like if I if I was in a situation where I'm thinking like, wow, I wanna like have sex with this person, I would still think of that with the group. I would just think like, when are we gonna leave the group? Rather than like, like we're all just gonna go hang. Does that make sense? Is this retarded? I just, I, it all seems like obviously romantic to me, but you know, hey. I, I guess I, maybe I'm just like, I am, I'm, poison the head because I guess all my interactions have been relatively this way so it's like uh, I just view it as normal behaviors which I guess is what in the video they're going to watch is Zeno's problem too because I don't really think of things too uh, romantic I guess versus like normal but okay okay lame
Okay, good luck. Bye. <laughs> How old is Darius again? Just checking. Twenty-seven. Okay. I could be Coomer brained on this, but there are so many other ways to hang out if you're guys and girls than going out to get drinks at night. It's just like, it's such an obvious setup to fuck. You go out, it's nighttime, like nothing left to do in the day. It's a one-on-one -on -one environment. Um, it's already dark outside, so it's setting the mood. You're drinking alcohol, you're getting a little tipsy, you're loosening up, you're opening up to each other. Like restaurants and bars are closing, what are you gonna do? Like that is such an obvious setup. If there was a girl that I, let's say for instance, a first date, I want them to get to know me and I don't wanna have like any weird pressure or if it's just like a friend and it's literally, this is just like a, a friend, then I would do, I would ask for coffee. I've been on coffee dates before. Those barely ever lead to sex. It's just like, oh, we get out, we get a coffee, we chat for a bit, we catch up, and then we part ways. And that's like, this morning, there's other shit to do, like, super obvious, and yeah, but. What, why did you rejoin, what? Okay, is this possibly a defense is that I'm in Arizona? You can't do anything during the day. Like, literally, it's too way too hot outside. You, like, you can go want... out, I've been to Phoenix several times. You can go out in the day, okay? It's hot, people you do it. You have an air conditioner, you drive, every place indoors air conditioned, okay? Yes, you can absolutely go out. Ah, You're dude, not going outside uh, and like running track, but yeah, you can go to a coffee yeah, shop, of course. Dude, dude, fuck, it's it's just so fucking, it's, I don't know. Literally, everyone wants to hang out rather at night. Like, if I'm going to go outside, even like to a coffee shop, the point of like, I feel like, if like you're in Washington, I'd be like more prone to go to a coffee shop because it's beautiful outside, it's nice, I could actually, like, we can go on a walk outside afterwards. But like, you're not going to do that at all in Arizona. Like, I don't know, I don't even know if there's, there's probably is a coffee shop here, but like, fucking Arizona, dude. Like, and I'm in a college town. I don't know. Okay. But yeah. When okay. You, you did walks in Washington, you were still fucking a woman. So what's the difference there? What was that argument? Was that an argument? What are you saying? That's romantic to you too. So I mean, that's that's all I was saying. This thing's right about what you just said. Oh, you went to Washington and fucked a woman. What was that? Like instead of just coping and saying, "Oh, it's normal," just say that that's just how you are as a person. Just be. Take accountability and be like, you just like to be that way with women. It is romantic to go get drinks with them at night. You're obviously trying to fuck. Like, just say, but yeah. I, 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 I just told you I'll also invite like, guys to, like, go out for drinks. I thought I told you I'll also invite guys independently. I can show you text messages. If guys sexual, like, and if the guy no, was not feminine enough, boy. he would fuck I have but never in my life, I think maybe get a beer with a guy or maybe go to dinner with a guy that you're friends with, but I could never imagine, like, messaging a dude and be like, hey, and maybe there are there might be guys that do this. Maybe I don't know. But like messaging a friend, like, "Hey, do you want to go out to like the bar just you and me, and, like get drinks and chat?" I guess it's I mean, possible, no, I, but I, I've done a few like complaint. dinner business meetings, but but that would have to be a guy that I'm like friends with. And I feel like it, I feel like you'd go get beers or something. Or I feel like it'd be a group hangout or something. No, because it's nice to just people watch. It's nice to go there and get like a fucking rum and coke and people watch. I don't. I, I'm, I'm like, not even fucking trolling. It's like it's fine. I invited my boy Omar like literally like, four days ago. I can show you the text messages. Yeah, like the girl who messaged me that I had sex with like two years ago. She's a fucking teacher. I invited her uh, to just go get drinks and just like fucking like people watch and talk. Mm -hmm. And so I don't. I don't think of it as like a. I don't. Right. I, don't, I, don't yeah, I guess it's possible. I, sure. I, I, I still say it's like. I still though. say it's like it's probably different if you invite a girl. I guess it's possible with a guy friend. Sure. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it probably is a different connotation, but I don't, I don't think that uh, it's like it's like a good like. Maybe First, you said he hit you up and invited you, not. Just saying, okay, hold on, Zena. Listen, I love you, you but your connection is so fucking dog shit. Shit. You're like so every other word is coming through. Up. And this is new. You're lying. And now bro. you're saying you did go out to drink, you know, right? Why is she? Is she delayed? Yeah, she because she's at like a hair salon or something. What are you asking, Zena? I said his story changed. Because first you said she hit you up a few days ago and invited you out, and you didn't go. Now you did go, and you invited her out, which I'm I trying never, to understand. I never went anywhere. She messaged me, and then I asked her if she wanted to go out to get drinks. And then when I was saying that, I had no sexual undertones there. I just wanted to go out to get drinks and people watch. Because I like, I like watching drunk people. 
Sorry, Destiny. I think you might be the ally here. I've gone out multiple times with girls I knew from high school for some drinks and nothing happened. I don't, I don't know what to say, my dude. I'm sorry. I don't. I can't like say anything. I'm not going to. You're trying to fuck somebody. It I would be not, so much easier dude, just to say dude, that. It's so fucking like that's the problem. That's why I'm like, dude. Why are we like? Especially why are we the other way? It's just like I'm being told that I'm I'm not trying to have sex with this person. Like if I went ahead and was in the situation, I wouldn't have had sex. With them. No, I'm saying like you're denying yourself. Like it's okay. Just just don't deny yourself. I'm not denying myself. You're making an assumption of who I am based on your own like personal experience. Okay, my apologies. You know, this is like this isn't is an issue because this is a reoccurring theme. Maybe I need to look into it because, like, technically, you're like, assuming. With wait, 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 wait. First, you're assuming that I'm angry. I'm not angry. Here, okay. The big problem you have is that both of you are fucking retarded, but in completely different ways, and your retardation clashes on like every single different level because you both have horrible understandings of yourselves and what you want out of life and relationships. So that's what's happening, but. Listen, I'm just here listening. I'm along for the ride, you know, here to support both you guys, but. Yeah, but maybe I need to, um, what I'm trying to say right now is maybe I need to really, I like, I need to look into what I'm doing, but what I, I like doing what I do. I don't have any issue with it. Well, you like um, doing like, what, do you, I mean, do you, I don't, listen, if you, I, I don't, we don't have to have this conversation publicly if we don't want to, okay? Because I don't want to, like, just fucking roast the fuck out of you, okay? Also, I'm not perfect either. I make mistakes, too. But, like, you like doing what you're doing because you live your life as a fuckboy. So you have every single girl around you on a string constantly for romantic or sexual access whenever you want while all of them are, like, in limbo feeling fucking horrible. Of course you like what you're doing. Like, th yeah, that makes sense. But the question is whether or not it's like healthy for people around you or whether or not it's gonna give you good long-term relationship outcomes. Like what you're doing right now is really good for the life of a fuck boy, but if you're trying to get more serious to settle down or if you're wondering why you're having like so much strange conflict around you, I think it's because the way that you approach these interactions or relationships or hangouts are very, uh, there it's a particular type of style that's gonna like lead to the same thing yeah, over and over and over again. I, dude, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain this, but I, I feel like there's a kind of I guess I guess I am bringing people along because I'm not saying like no we're never gonna date because the, the but when I was single the conversation was that you know we could possibly date in the future I just need to get over my personal shit and then just like see if we could just like, that's like that answer that you're giving is the worst answer like at least I can use the excuse of if a girl gets obsessed yeah, with me at least I can right. point back to a conversation and say, listen I told you we're never dating I'm married to Melina I'm not breaking up like yeah. that's it but when you're saying things like well maybe in the future there that's could like be how, some that's how things work though like it doesn't matter you know, if that's right? how things work that you're it's that's like poison to a person's mind right you that is like the most toxic type of thing you can ever say somebody to to keep somebody uh on a string right to, you're spinning plates basically in my opinion well no not in my opinion that is what's happening <laughs> honestly if if he were to if he were to answer like how you just said you would say, then there'd be no problems at all. Like if that's just how you respond to people and you keep like those boundaries by saying, I'm doing this, I'm with this person, this is this, like, yeah, that's easy. Do whatever you want then. What do you think I tell people? Well, what you just said, and that's your accounting aversion. Well, so I imagine that's the most- No, 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 he said- See that your phone, I don't know what the fuck- What? I don't know what you he just said. He said that's what he would say when he was single, like, okay. Oh, sure. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I understand. But I'm he just saying, like, even when you're single, when like, single. I feel like, be because also that, that answer, Darius, if we're being truthful, that answer is not honest as well, right? This is something, <laughs> some people might get mad at me. I don't believe anybody. When people say things like, I'm not ready for a relationship, I'm working on myself, that's not true. What that means is they just don't feel strongly enough about you to jump into it. There is no person out there that is quote unquote working on themselves, waiting for uh, waiting to be ready for a relationship. If they find the right person, they're gonna jump into it. And trust me, I see especially girls, but I'm sure guys probably don't lie to themselves as much as girls do about this, but I've seen girls all the time do that shit. It's like, oh no, like I'm not gonna date any guy for a while. I'm not ready, blah, blah. and then two weeks later, she meets the guy and it's like, oh, 
boom, I'm in a relationship, right? That's that yeah, that does happen. So, but so when you're saying that, and also I think it's probably the same for you. I seriously doubt that you're like, oh yeah, like I'm on some deep introspective grind set right now, and you know I'll maybe wait in the future. You're saying that because you probably don't want to date the girl, or because you're spinning another plate and you're looking to date maybe another girl, and you're trying to see how that works out first. Or, or. It's that I do genuinely feel that way, and then like maybe if someone else came along, maybe like because I see a lot of people, girls say that, and then they'll date someone like on a whim, right? Whim, right? But then like they'll get out of that relationship, and then they'll be like, well, I kind of just felt like I had to, like things were kind of just like, like okay, that's really fine, but like you almost dated Grace on a whim, right? You almost dated that Ava chick on a whim. Now you're dating Xena on a whim. I mean, like, what's the difference between you or any of those other people? I mean, yeah, but I like I get, that goes again with like the things are really intense and like if I really like got into those things, I probably would have just reconsidered it like after like a week or two, which is like probably not good, but uh, I I mean, like we would have had a conversation, which is kind of like not where I'm at right now with Zena, but like like I like I'm like I'm like it's not where I'm saying I'm at, I'm at right now with Zena, but like we're like okay like what is happening here like if I if I did do this on a whim and if we both kind of like rush into things. How are we making this work um, right now and like understanding each other or whatever? Um, I guess. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know what else you want me to yeah. say. Oh, okay. You almost dated these people because first it's content, first it's bits. Which is the correct answer? That's none of it is that. content and none of it is a bit. All of it is plausible deniability. It's like when a guy goes up to a girl and is like, wouldn't it be funny if we fucked? And the girl's like, uh, what? And the guy's like, oh, that's part of my bit. None of it is a bit. None of it is content. All of it is sincere. Right, I know. I just want him to say it. I just... Oh. I know, Destiny. I just want him to actually say it. <laughs> just say some of it's a bit. Uh... It's like a good like like seventy thirty. Like seventy thirty what you almost dated Ava. Seventy thirty what you almost dated Grace, meaning there was emotional attachment and you did like them, so you can no longer after this point say I anything was just content or bits. Ava, so just admit it. I didn't almost date Ava and there was issues I had with Ava when I went up there that I talked to you about that existed that were not prevalent after we got to know each other more that I looked past um with Grace it was like uh like we had like a genuine conversation about stuff and it was like things were like I, I don't really want to talk about Grace I think Grace is like a really weird situation uh and I don't know what I was feeling during that time I honestly got I think I was like having some mental problems uh but yeah with Ava I, we never we never dated. We talked about like how things would go. Um, I feel like I probably could have done better by just saying like I'm not. I need to. I need to be able to say like I'm not dating anybody anytime soon. A lot clearer. But um, I don't know. I don't know what you're. What you're. What you're what you getting? Like, what do you want me to? What do you want me to say? That like when I flirt with people, I am like. Like, yeah, I think they're attractive and stuff like that. Am I looking to be serious with them? No. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing a bit where I'm, like, joking my flirtatiousness. Okay, so what was the approach with me? What was the approach with me? For example, when I said for, that I preferably like to be single for maybe two more years because I wasn't ready, but obviously I got to know you more and agreed to you basically pushing a relationship. Uh, I asked why you wanted to do that. When you when you told me that you wanted to be single for at least two more years, um, and figure your life out, I was like, "Why do you want to do that?" And then we had a conversation about it. That was it. Well, was wait. Was the yeah, was the question why do you want to do that, or was the question was, is why do you want to do that when you could be dating me? Yeah, that that, that, that was a, it was a previous. Yeah, that's previous. why I asked. No, the, the, if I said the former that if I did do that, I, I that would be really manipulative. And, bad so i hope i did not do that i'm pretty sure i did the former i mean which is which is right. which is just asking so i was why. asking how did we get to this point then like what was the approach well we we got to this point because we started talking more 
uh, off stream and start hanging out more and then he told me that you really liked me and I was like I really like you too and then we talked more as time went on and then we met in person and then yeah what do you are you trying to say that at some point I brought up a relationship and then so I started then to would you consider this dating in a whim or would you consider this dating because it was a mutual agreement um, I think because of the length of time, it was probably on the one. I, I told you, like, as a friend, you can't even tolerate my behaviors. So, if you could tolerate my behaviors as a friend, probably in a relationship, it'd make more sense. Like, for us to get to a relationship that way. Like, a lot of the behaviors I have with, like, just my friends, you seem to be really mad about, even before we were dating. God, I don't have sex with friends, which is what I told you. I would not have sex with you if there's no relationship off the table either. I don't fuck my friends. You do, not me. It's okay. We're just different people when it comes to that. I don't fuck my friends. Uh-huh. And then we have a relationship. Right now. But then through that relationship... I'm just making it clear for Destiny's... Wait, what did yeah. you? I'm sorry, hold on. Wait, what did you just say? I said I'm just making it very, uh, as clear and transparent as possible for your analysis. Like, there's oh, no issue. Oh, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, okay, gotcha. Okay. You're, right good, you're good, you're good. I'm sorry, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to. Well, we started yeah, yeah. Because that Britney bitch, was... I don't know who she is, but I want to fight Britney. The only reason why there's been issues since we've been dating is just because of the constant, like, meat watching on me and the outburst and frustration okay i don't know isn't meat watching kind of like what you do in a relationship like i mean yeah but it's like every single thing is like some sort of an argument like everything that i like do like the way i present myself on sure do you want to know do you want to know why i can tell you because i have these issues so i know firsthand the issue is that if you present something one way and it turns out to be another way, then in the other person's mind, one of two things is happening. Either one, you're retarded, so they have to constantly check you to see if you're actually retarded, or two, you're lying and they have to constantly check you because they don't trust you. So if you've presented, for instance, certain relationships as just friendly or casual, and then the other person finds out that, hold on, these relationships are way more romantically inclined than I thought, Right? Especially keep in mind the space that Xena comes from. In Xena's world, a hookup is you meet a chick at a party, you smash her, and you don't even fucking stay the night. You might not even trade numbers, right? That's what hookups in that in her world where she comes from might look like. And in your world, it's flying out to places, dinners, movies, cuddles, showers, sex, friendship, texting, right? That's a it's a totally different style of relationship or presentation. So if you tell her that it's one way and then she sees that it's a completely different way, right? Like our in our world, our style of hookups might be more than in her world, what she's heard people do in relationships, right? So yeah. I'm just saying that hearing that difference and then being confronted with that over and over and over and over again is of course gonna make her feel like this motherfucker is either retarded or just lying to me about everything. Yeah, so then is it just my, since I'd agreed to the relationship, is it just my job to like reassure every time like those things come up rather than- Well, sure, I, but I you also, think... you can never be wrong on any of it too, because then it just looks like you're lying. Yeah, but <laughs> I guess. But then, like, I my the view of wrong is like these are like sub, these are almost like subjective conversations we're having. Well, sure, of course. Like, I mean, it's all to some extent subjective and in interpretations. But like, what's like what's a disagreement you guys have had? Uh disagreement we've had recently. Um, we had a big fight like like literally like two days ago. I'm kind of like we're kind of like on the not talking thing right now just for a little bit because uh, she insulted one of my friends do you want to give more details than that or no when you say one of your friends do you mean a girl that you used to hook up with that's talking to you now uh yeah i guess okay so what tell me don't do you can share more if you want or you don't have to it's up well it was just it was just a rude state it was just like like i said something in private to her and she used it to like make fun of her and i was like that's not nice kind of like fucked up 
You said it in private to Xena, and Xena made fun of the other girl to the girl's face with it. No, just to like in a casual setting with friends, and we're just like, oh. talking. And I was like, "Why even say that? It's like this is rude. It's like." She, Wait, she why do you? I'm curious. Why do you think she said it? Uh, because she was really mad. Okay, and probably it. feels Xena won't admit to this, but probably also feels a little bit threatened by a lot of these other chicks too. Probably, but she has no reason to. Okay, but it doesn't matter what the reason is, right? It just matters if she feels that way or not, right? Yeah, but like I don't know. I'm not gonna start. Just well, no, Destiny, but I'll message you. I'm. In I'm not. If that could have him. If a bitch like that could take him, she can have him. I'll message you on the. I'm okay. Destiny. There's almost There's nothing no you can say to change my mind on this, but I understand. Too. Okay. <laughs> This is crazy. Like, have you seen my exes? Like, you wouldn't co-sign any of my exes that I've had, and they've I've been with them. They've they taken, quote unquote. Like, like I don't like. What is this thing where you're just like, if a bitch can have you, you could she could just like leave you. Like, How do I? Take you. Like, it's just. Alright, hold on. Go ahead. How do I start like, by building these as concrete? I don't know how to start as concrete. Fight over a man either. That's like. Point. But you're not. If a bitch can take you from me, she can have you. That's my point. But, Why would I fight? to try to keep somebody I'm not going to fight to keep somebody no and yeah. if a bitch like i said you're, um you're, no disrespect you're, I just, shadow, you're actually with shadow gap boxing. teeth or somebody that's significantly lesser than me i don't care but you're not fighting no anybody. i'm not i'm telling you specifically if a bitch could take you from me she's going to have you and keep you not me i'm not going to go and argue oh that's my nigga da, da, da. that's retarded no the only person I'm checking when I get upset is you. I don't check the other bitches. They have no loyalty or obligation to make sure I'm straight. My partner does. That's where you miss. These other bitches don't make commitments to me. They have no commitments to me. So you would make fun of the girl to check me? So what was, was this in relation to? Okay. One, you said I was making fun of her. I was making a comment because you couldn't decide whether or not it was a lie or the truth. And then I made a slight comment. That was fucked up. That's it. We don't have to get into that, though. Okay. All right. Well, looks like this video needs to get watched. So. If I were trying to be nasty, don't you think I would bring it up again? I mean, you, you've been, you haven't, you didn't do it for a reason because I got really mad at you and didn't want to fucking talk to you and it's very rude to you for the entire day, the rest of the night, and I haven't really talked to you since then because I was not happy with your behavior. Did you, I'm, so yeah, I'm just making a couple of guesses, I don't know. So when you told Zena this thing about this other girl, did you tell this to Zena in a conversation where Zena felt vulnerable or threatened by this other girl, and you told this to Zena in the hopes to make her see that like that other girl wasn't a threat? Is that how this oh, came up? Just, or it was just a casual conversation we were having, and I brought up some like personal stuff. Okay, probably don't do that about anybody, right? Yeah, maybe. Why, why, why we don't don't do what talk about personal things? Well, don't share like really personal aspects of other people's lives with other well, it's partners. Like with your partner, you, you're you gonna just tell me you don't talk with Melina about like your personal stuff with other people sometimes. Um, me and Melina share almost everything, but me and Melina have been together for four or five years. Yeah. So like, is, I've got a higher good. level of trust that she's not about to like burn the bridge and just start leaking shit or saying crazy shit to other people. Yeah, and I mean, I like. Like, I, I get that, but I mean, someone who's my girlfriend, um, I'd like to be able to, like, I mean, maybe I should have... Yeah, but I'm time. using girl, not to be mean, but I'm using, we're using girlfriend here in air quotes. You guys have been together for weeks? A month? Yeah. You guys have known each other yeah, for, like, yeah. two months? Like, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I I, I, I don't know. Like, Are you about to add her to your will or something? Or, I mean... No, but it's, it's but it's like, it's just a, it's like a, it's like a personal thing, and it's like, I don't expect, like, my, my girlfriend to just, like, randomly, like, just start airing that out. Okay. Or just like using it in like casual conversation with me as like a way to like get it with me. Like I, I get it now. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, like fuck around, you found out. And I guess that's kind of looky what I was doing. I was like, okay, I can say this thing. And if she brings it up, I understand that like I fucked up there. Uh, but like now that I found out, I'm like, okay, well, like, like, why, why would I, like, that's where I'm like frustrated. I'm like, okay, well, I'm with a partner that will do stuff like that. 
So I need to assess my situation. Okay. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes, indubitably. Good Quiet. Good, good luck with the video, Steve. Thanks. Good, Zena. You got anything else to say? Okay, so what was the call about last night then? What call? When you called me last night. I called you to apologize for my behavior because you want me to be like open and honest or Okay. Okay, but now you're acting as but now you're pre wait, wait, but you're also preaching that it's just, but you're preaching that it's also justified right now. That's the only reason why I'm asking. So it's either you are I'm not preaching that my behavior. I'm not preaching that my behavior, which means you're not sorry. I'm not preaching that my behavior is justified. I'm saying me getting up I my behavior towards like I said, do you want me to be like completely honest? Like, cause that, cause like if we could, I'm apologizing for what I was apologizing for is my behavior with how I was handling your situation. No, you can be completely honest and private then if that's the Okay. Well, I was. I was okay. Uh, All right. That's I was what apologizing I was for how I was reacting to you. Um, and your shit. I was not apologizing for getting upset about what you did because that's not that's not cool right and i uh, and i also took accountability and said that wasn't cool of me to do either because okay, well, okay, so it's a I, trust thing that you have the issue with is you told me something in confidence okay yeah okay and, huh yeah no i know that what am i supposed to do about that like uh, now, now that you've, uh, you've already you've already done the action, so I can't just like like uh, forgive you. Steven has to watch a video. This is a little gay. I have to go. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. Yeah, watch this uh, good old Britney video. You can check what I, when you have time. I sent you a private message. Okay. Well, right. I'll talk to you guys later. I bye. sent you a private message. You can check later. Yep. See you later. To explain more. Bye. Bye. I've never kissed. We do nice, affectionate things with them, which, again, if you're in Seattle, pretty normal to like hang out with your friends and maybe cuddle with them, maybe even shower with them. I have platonic friends that I've never kissed, that I've never like sexually been involved with, that I've taken showers with, that I've had threesomes with, where we didn't do anything together, which I It gets even more wacky. <laughs> I think is very platonic in my mind. Um, but we've like focused on their partners or I've done BDSM with people that have like never touched my genitalia. So for me, of course, I think this is possible to have platonic opposite sex, sex friends that you're sort of like flirty romantic with without it being dating or sexual. But obviously you have to be trained in that and you have to be healthy about it. And it's very hard to be healthy because often it's a miscommunication and people are confused. Like Xena expressing distraught um, being distraught over her relationship with Darius is proving that something is unhealthy, right? They're not healthy, happy, kind. There's something missing in the way that they're communicating. There's something missing that she's complaining about that he is frustrated with. And so again, she is saying that ideally, I would like a partner who I don't care if he sleeps with other women, only you'll hear her say it. The caveat is that she would like monogamy, but she thinks that all men are going to cheat and need to have like physical satisfaction with other women women because like she's works for fresh and fit she knows what it's like blah 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 oh the amount of bubbles like it's so insane the way these people limit themselves okay let's keep going but like basically listen to listen to this self-fulfilling sabotage cycle like it's a beautiful thing and i want more for zina i want more for everybody i want you to know you can have exactly the life you want but you have to know that you're settling to even think you can have it right that's where I'm having a hard time finding that compromise in middle ground is the playlist so, and, and that stuff. Like that's your hard, yeah. Your hard line is like playlist making and any sort of like basically romantic overtures. Do you have an issue with him like doing group like public flirting or anything? Like I think I've seen videos of him like flirting with people in group settings. Is that okay with you? Like what do you mean? 
Like, uh, I would say of all the things that you can also compromise on in terms of like hobbies, interests, blah, 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 um, relationship style is almost certainly not gonna be one of those things. If you are a monogamous person, or if you are a, you know, you really wanna do poly or open stuff, um, maybe a poly person could be monogamous, maybe. Um, but there's no way if you're a monogamy minded person that you should be like, oh, I think I'd rather do an exclusive relationship, but I guess since I really like this person, I'll do um, open. That is a absolute recipe for disaster. Okay, shout out RuneScape Quest for our Barrows Clubs. Uh, if he's like, yeah, if he's like in a group like, setting, but he looks putting his head. I wanted him to go on the eater and rizz up bitch. Like I literally am actively setting. Okay, so a few things. Again, everyone has different language everywhere, but I will say Zena's misogynistic language and she identifies herself as a misogynist, right? She always says like, you don't have to convince me. I'm a misogynist. I'm a red pill. But like she is very misogynistic in her language, which like I understand, girl. I feel you, you know, with a little pick me, but I get it. Where you're trying to say like these bitches, these hoes, like riz up a bitch, like find a bad bitch to riz up. Like her language is so interesting to me because again, in a healthy setting, we don't need to demoralize other people to humanize ourselves. In a healthy setting, I don't need to call a woman a derogatory term to like uplift myself in my relationship with my man. And you'll see that at the very end of the stream, the way she like threatens other women if they quote unquote go for her man. This language, this possessiveness is completely toxic. There's just like no healthy relationship in which it is reasonable and rational and it completely um, confident person, a person who's completely good with themselves to feel the sense of unnecessary ill will towards another person, right? You can feel it. You can feel disdain for their lack of values. But again, that's your values onto them. You can feel like a little bit jealous. Jealousy is normal. You know, you can work around those feelings of jealousy. But even her language is just so dysfunctional in and of itself, which again, everyone speaks differently. You can use the word bitch towards a woman and not mean it derogatorily, but the, the, it's a very fine line. You have to know how to do it, right? It's a very fine line and I don't see Xena expressing that. And again, she does self-identify as like a misogynist, right? So like, I'm not, I'm not hating on her. I'm just like clarifying what bubble she's coming from. Heading up an e with people I don't like, like um, boys and stuff. hmm. There are times where it's okay to say this person is different and no judgment. And then there are also times where I think we should probably be doing a little bit of moral condemnation. Like, <laughs> I don't know if it's fair to be like, oh, like Xena's bubbles. Like Xena, I think it clearly has like an unhealthy outlook on relationships and herself right now and probably clearly needs to work on that. Um, I don't think that there is any world where Xena's bubble or Xena's outlook on anything is like a healthy or positive way to move forward. But uh, I don't know. He's one of the dudes too, so obviously he's gonna have to riz up some bad bitches. Like that's different. That's content. Whatever. Now, mm, sorry. One last thing. Also, the thing that her and Darius do, which is interesting, much like uh, Lena and Adam Twenty Two, is that they make content together and they're in a relationship. So the issue is Zena and Darius make content. Sometimes they even like get clickbaity together. They'll like fake argue together for views. So it's not always clear what is sensational for the views, which they're fully open they're doing, or what is um, what is uh, like actually happening within the context of the relationship. Also, let me just say this, okay? It is exceptional. It is exceptional. Now, now I'm gonna say this. Now I won't even say this. If somebody is like joking about a thing, there is almost always a large degree of truth to that thing. Um, just be aware of that. Like for guys, for instance, um, and there should be a red flag if you're a girl actually. Um, if you're chatting with a guy and he kind of like casually makes like sexual jokes towards you, he's testing the waters. People use humor to test the waters all the time. Fucking trans people use humor to test the waters of trying to be a different gender, right? Contrapoints has talked about this. Finster is probably in the middle of that. But no, I'm just saying like, yeah, people like, jokes are always a way to test the waters because when you're joking, you have Schrodinger's desire. If the person reciprocates, well, you were always into them and you're glad they reciprocated and now you guys can explore that. And if they don't reciprocate, well, you were always joking. It was just a meme. It's always just a bit. It's okay. Like there's no harm, no foul. And you don't have to risk any sort of vulnerability there. So even this conversation is hard, but I, I think it's possible. So I personally agree with Zena that you can have 
a separation between like romantic, platonic, sexual. Like I think you can have as much caveats in your. You almost can never separate these things. It's almost impossible to. That's why Britney is probably in her current style of relationship is probably monogamous. It is. It is possible, but it is insanely difficult to do. It is very, 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 very difficult to do. It is very, very, very difficult to do. One of the things, for instance, that I've learned probably over the past year is that like when it comes to like messing around with people, if you're like an open poly alternative relationship style person, it's probably better to mess around with other people that are also in those lifestyles because monogonoid people will think they can do it and they absolutely can. Um, the same way that two monogamous people might think they can be friends with benefits for a long time and somebody gets, you know, develops feelings for another person and things get fucked. Um, yeah, it's just, it is possible. But it's very, 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 very difficult. It's incredibly difficult to do. relationship as you need it just depends on how you understand language because if you read the polyamory books if you read the open books if you read the bdsm books if you read these books they'll tell you how to make this happen in your relationships but if you're just guessing and learning along the way girl why are you trying to invent the wheel these communities have been around for decades and they've already done it for you you don't have to reinvent the wheel you can take their models and then switch it to work for you but you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And I feel like everybody on this panel is like always trying to reinvent the wheel. Like read more than two, read the books on polyamory, read The Ethical Slut, like read books that have already come, like people have come before you, written down multiple ways to do these things in a better way, like a healthy way. So you don't have to trial and error through your 20s and 30s. Just letting you know. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's different. So I guess... I think that like issue that's happening when I hear it is the lines you're like you're creating this situation where you're encouraging him to do a bunch of behavior that's like riddled with landmines and it's like pretty clear that his like past behavior is something that you're not comfortable with in the relationship which is fine and he's willing to negotiate as far as like taming those behaviors down but the issue is like if you're setting up e-dates for him but he's not allowed to flirt or do romantic overtures but that's like a really standard thing that he's used to doing with most rizzing I I get it content that, so I that's get it the, the issue that I'm saying is it feels like you're asking for like a 180 flip in behavior and like that's not realistic and then kind of like sending him down a pathway that is like most likely to upset you okay so though I can understand where Kyla's coming from here I would say like this I would say how do you feel about anyone who uses the just read this book style advice uh, my intuition would be that just reading a book is probably not going to be enough. You're going to need a lot of real life messy experience as well to learn things. But I also haven't read the book, so I can't like, I'm not here to pass judgment on something I haven't read. That'd be pretty silly of me to do. Okay, so Xena wants a very structured relationship, which I'm all about. I love a structured relationship, girl. Same. And Kyla is saying it's going to make him do a 180, which is unrealistic. I don't think it's unrealistic. I think it lacks boundaries and that's why it's unrealistic and it's confusing because Zena's is not quite sure what she wants because she's willing to caveat on her values because Zena is saying i want monogamy but i don't think men can be monogamous so i'm willing to settle for a situation where he sleeps with other women and darius is saying i'll be monogamous with you i won't sleep with other women but i need to be romantic or cuddle or affectionate with my girlfriends there's like so many layers of bubbles involved here that you guys don't even realize it there are relationships Again, I've ha I have friends like this where we cuddle, sometimes we kiss. Not now, I'm monogamy, monogamous, monogamous. So like I don't do this with my friends anymore. But in the past, I would hug and kiss my friends. Um, I would have sex with my friends. I would not have sex with some of my friends that I would cuddle with. Some people- It's so strange that she's like saying in the beginning, it's so important that these words mean things and that they like or whatever. And then, yeah, I'll, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I have no idea what she's saying for any, I just can't even translate here. I'm not sure, but men women non-binary like I've had I just have the exact relationship I negotiate with that exact person it's not black and white it's literally so the opposite of black and white every single person I have the relationship with I negotiate specifically with them so even in my new like my marriage right now this marriage I have had to negotiate you call your friends with benefits friends yeah I do but I also don't think I would describe them as platonic if it's a girl that I'm fucking but she might be using platonic to mean like relationship style. Like I've got girls that I'm fucking that I'm not dating. Maybe that's what she means. Um, but even that gets like kind of weird. Like what does it mean to be like, for instance, what does it mean to be fucking somebody, but to be friends with them, but then like not dating them, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the, 
I feel like the real issue is that like these words are a little bit restrictive and it's kind of hard to describe exactly what's going on because we've got such established meanings for these words that you probably need to invent new ones to explain what's really happening. Kind of like how like the question of like, are, tra are traps gay, right? Is it gay to have sex with a pre-op trans person? Like, I don't know if our, I think our current language has too many limitations to adequately address that question by just saying, is it gay or is it not gay, right? How many, how much coal per minute um, do these factories consume? Is it 15, is it 30? It's 15, oh. Okay, makes sense. Negotiate like okay, OnlyFans opportunities, um, random nude events, uh, hugging, kissing other people, <clears throat> because I've lived thirty plus years doing my own thing. Of course, I needed to have a new relationship negotiation with the consciousness that is my partner. So every relationship you have needs to be modeled between the two people in it. Let's say two for this sake, because Polly makes it difficult with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's say with the two people modeled here, Zena and Darius. Darius, Darius. So like the both of them, they need to come together and say, do we actually want the same things? And it's not gonna work if Zena already is saying, ideally I'd want monogamy, but I'm gonna settle for this. Don't settle. That's why it will never be healthy. Because the moment you settle- That's what she's saying is half true. You can't, I don't think you can settle on relationship styles. That's wild, in my opinion. That you're gonna be like, yeah, I, I feel I'd want this, you know, monogamous or open, blah, 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 but I'm gonna do that. I don't think you can ever settle in that way. But there are gonna be some aspects of a relationship that you're going to settle on. Um, and that's just that's just universally true. And anybody that tells you different is hard coping um, because they're either honeymooning with a partner or they are using settle in a way that's different than any other person in the world. Well, you're saying I'm losing a part of myself that I'd prefer to have that I might even need. Are these equal distance? But I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to fight for it because it's impossible. The fact that Zena thinks all men, generally men can't be monogamous when the rest of the world is mostly monogamous actually this poly girl there's a poly girl on this panel the one with glasses i don't know who she is but she said it she goes i'm the outlier i'm the weird one who has an open relationship most of the world is monogamous yeah most of the world is not thinking about having multiple partners it's not thinking about that like most of the world is not thinking oh men are gonna cheat on me they're just thinking bad men will cheat on me do you guys understand that like normal people if you cheat on your partner you're a bad person in average society, cheating is the bad thing. It's not normal to think, oh, men will cheat. It is normal to think men will look. It is normal to think men might look at porn. It is normal to think men might notice a woman who's walking next to him. But it is not normal to assume your husband will cheat on you. That is dysfunctional. We have allowed dysfunctional people like Fresh and Fit to gain this narrative on the internet. And Xena works for them, so I get it to convince women and men that it is na nature, natural for women, or I'm sorry, for men to cheat on their wives. That is not natural. It's not, what is natural? Everything a human does is quote unquote natural, but like it's not common. Most people aren't getting into relationships thinking, oh yes, well, my husband will cheat on me. It's like, no, why would we think that? Unless we're all, you know, reaching for dysfunction. If you're reaching for dysfunction, then yes, your man will cheat on you. But if you're not reaching for dis dysfunction okay. and you're going for something more healthy, this is the same then distance. obviously the healthy thing to do is not cheat on your partner. Cheating on your partner is always unhealthy because the cheating couldn't have occurred without a lack of breaking a, a trust, right? I'm going to pause right now for this super chat from Truth Marie. Thank you so much. 999. Girl, that's a big super chat. Thank you. I says, oh my God, hold on. How about a sneeze? Okay, we breathe. Okay. Oh my god, I just got this worst sneeze attack. Okay. Oh, am I gonna make it? Okay, I muted myself so I didn't hurt the earphone users. Woo! Okay, so, um, sorry, Tooth Marie says, I just, uh, oh, I just got broken up today uh, by my girlfriend. You have an idea why she hates cheating so much? I mean, to be fair, most people hate cheating. And apparently she was cheated on in the past, so it's like a huge like pathology for her. But also, it is true that 
for some reason, uh, well, not for some reason, it's because they're fresh and fit, that people have this idea that, like, it's ordinary or normal, like, for Zena saying, like, oh, all men are going to cheat or whatever. That's not true. You shouldn't go into relationships expecting that. Like, if you go into a relationship expecting that as a guy or a girl, like, you're already hardcore, like, starting off on an unhealthy level. Like, it's a super, super horrible way to approach um, a relationship. 25, and she was 23. This was my first ever relationship. Any tips with moving forward? First of all... I'm very sorry. As you know, breakups are 100% about your growth and their growth. And this is a part of your story. So like get ready to like live in this moment. You're in a very interesting moment and you're gonna gain a lot of tools right now. But ultimately like take your time, mourn the relationship, allow yourself to feel sad over it. I mean, 25 and 23, that's like, you're probably gonna remember this relationship, right? This is probably gonna be one of those really significant relationships for you. This is normal. You're having a very normal part of your 20s, falling in love and having a breakup, right? So definitely embrace the feelings of mourning, allow this person to move on, allow you to eventually move on. But you know, take your time, no rush. And eventually when it's the right time, you'll mourn the appropriate amount of time and you'll move on. I don't think there's a time limit for what's appropriate. I think what's more important is that you've allowed yourself to acknowledge that this was important and now we're going to do something different. Oh, we were together for six months. Okay, so good news is that what a wonderful six months. And when it's time, you'll move on. I didn't see um, anyone as a teen or a young adult. I was homeschooled, same. I only did two years of public school. Otherwise, I was homeschooled. Interesting. Yeah, you got this, girly. Give yourself time. Give yourself, are you a boy or a girl actually? Marie, I'm gonna assume you're a girl. Um, but you know, give yourself time. Write it down in a journal. Your tone seems to indicate it's not a big deal, it's a huge deal. I think cheating is a huge deal, sure. I think that cheating is a bigger deal than it needs to be because I think most people are very unhealthy emotionally and draw way too much validation from either friends or romantic partners. I think the reason why cheating ends up being as big a deal as it is is because people draw an unbelievable amount of validation and confidence from the affirmations that they get from a romantic partner. And when you lose those, you've basically completely and totally lost yourself. However, this is one of those things that so unbelievably normalized, it feels stupid to even talk against it. Like when I say, for instance, it's dumb to use a house as your primary investment vehicle, that is true that it's stupid. However, everybody does it in society and it's so socially accepted that we like drive it as like social and financial policy and financial advisors will even advise in favor of it because it's so common that people do it. But um, yeah, I mean like obviously cheating is bad and horrible and it shouldn't happen, but like people that like, I wanna kill myself, I wanna kill myself, I wanna fucking kill myself, my boyfriend had four months cheat, I'm gonna fucking commit suicide. You've got problems. But hey, I mean, what do I know? Journal. It's more like trust being broken by someone you're supposed to be able to trust. No, I disagree. I don't think cheating has anything to do with trust. <laughs> and I understand. Well, I'm not gonna talk about this much because I know I'm the odd one out here. I don't give a fuck. I don't care what you fucking people think. Cheating, somebody breaking your trust does not elicit that level of response unless what it's actually doing is undermining a massive part of yourself and who you are. Um, that's just the, that's the reality of it. Um, the, uh, cause plenty of people can break your trust in ways that, um, hurt, but the, um, the, the reason why you're, um, hold on. Uh, the reason why trust breaking usually hurts the worst in relationships is because it usually undermines something about yourself, right? So for instance, if a parent does something fucked up or lies to you, like, yeah, it hurts because I guess like the parent broke the trust or whatever, which is annoying. But I think the reason why it's so mentally fucky is because it undermines a huge part of like, was I the reason why it happened? Like, did my mom or dad do this or lie or treat me this way because it's my fault? And I think that the big things that fuck with you when relationships are failing is that it's undermining your, uh, it's undermining your view of yourself and your um, confidence and yeah, just basically that, that's what I would say, yeah. But again, this is like, um, people feel very, very strongly about this. So it's not, it's never worth arguing, but hey, listen, take it to heart, uh, reflect on this, um, think about it. Has anyone ever cheated on you? Uh, yeah, it's happened, but <laughs> I don't give a fuck. 
but I, but it's also but like for me like sex and shit is not like a thing that I it doesn't mean much to me so um, yeah I don't give a fuck. About it with like someone who's close to you, and and realize like this isn't this is like a good hardcore memory for you to have for the rest of your life of like oh yeah that person I dated how interesting you know what I mean. Um, Rock Paper Plato says the gaslighting that has convinced certain bubbles that all men will cheat and that it's just a fact of nature is pretty woke. Like literally, I am shook at how many people keep just allowing this narrative to move on like it's normal. It's not normal. And what is normal? That's cultural. This week's podcast is going to be so good. I have a guest and we talk about normal versus weird. And I think um, it's about being appropriate. We like had this really great conversation, but basically, you know, what's appropriate? It is not appropriate to cheat on your partner. That's super inappropriate. You're being inappropriate, right? And so again, we have to have a conversation about what's appropriate. Oh, what's up? Appropriate. I think it's sort of inappropriate to assume your partner will cheat on you. It means there's something wrong. That's a red flag, right? Oh, Truth Maria says, um, this was my first ever relationship. She was supposed to- Excuse me, wants to play satisfactory? Why? I mean, if he wants to, all I have to do is message me. <laughs> I'd do it, but I've already got a big factory now, okay? Supposed to meet my siblings next week. Damn. Did she realize she was going to meet the family and then realized it was probably better to break up? That's fair. To be honest, rejection is a part of consent. And the good part about being broken up with is that she's basically giving you an opportunity to fall in love with the right person. We should date to break up. We should date to find our person. And so that means until you find the right person, you will always end up breaking up as you should. So the good news is that this wasn't your person, but it's definitely was going to give you a tool on like what it means to care for someone. And that's really beautiful, right? He's not hitting you up because you're far into the game. Okay, truthfully, I'm not really that far into the game. Okay. If he wants to hit me up, we can play a factory together. It's up to him, though. Okay. Also, would he actually stick with it? Because now I'd be restarting my whole world. If he gets bored in like a day, I don't actually know if I can play this. I feel like we should just do Terraria. If he wants to play a game, I feel like Terraria would be better. Doing these autism simulator games with other people because then I can't like manage my own autism. No relationship is a failure. If you've grown and experienced something you've gained from that relationship, absolutely. There's always a tool to be gained from everything. Make him join your world? Yeah, but it's not fun to join. If you're learning a game and you join somebody else's world and they've already like started a bunch of shit, I don't think that's fun. And everything is a moment in time, right? My marriage will last for as long as it lasts. Hopefully the length of my life. But... You know what I mean? Like it's that's a full moment. The length of my life is a moment. Like our my marriage won't last past my death because I'll be dead. So it's one of those things where everything ends. You know, it's just a matter of when. You know what I mean? No, I'm saying. What is blocking me from getting back, searching for a new relationship is that I feel it will be ending. Is it immature for me to uh hold on. This heart emoji is blocking chat, so I can't see it. So I have to wait for your chat to like move up a little bit. Is it blocking me from thinking relationships are temporary? I'm gonna assume that's what you said. Um, everything is temporary. And the only thing that's permanent is your commitment to the relationship. Is it immature of me of, is it immature of me not thinking relationships are temporary? Wait, so you do think they're temporary or you don't think they're temporary? Because the thing is, is like everything is temporary. It's just like again, everything is just a moment, but the moment can last a lifetime or it could last shorter. <laughs> Right? What are these platitudes? I hate the heart emoji too. I like it, but I want it to move. YouTube needs to get on this. It's very inconveniently placed. It's like the worst place it could be. There's so many other places it could have gone. There's so many other places they could have put it. I love it, but I really wish they would move it. I said they so want to figure the game out on their it's own? Like the okay, they can do that. Worst Damn. YouTube. Anyways, so let's keep going with this video. Um, because like there's just so many landmines. I'm not saying what you're saying is impossible. I'm just saying like the, the gap between like what you're looking for and where he's at is pretty big. So sending him on e dates as well as like kind of a recipe for disaster. He's probably gonna f up. But like if I'm okay, so again, the problem is, is like when your relationship is also content, like one of the reasons why my partner and I aren't 
online together is because like I don't want my relationship to be content as much as I talk about my relationship and maybe in the future that will change but the problem is like where you are on the internet right and what kind of an audience will talk about it like when Jordan Peterson and Tammy talk about their marriage their audience is looking at them like a very successful marriage they're very excited but if my relationship was being ostracized by this panel it would just be a bunch of dysfunctional people Kyla excluded who's looking at my relationship and again I don't know the, the there's, it's funny that she excludes herself from that dysfunction, but okay. Girl with glasses, so I don't know anything about her, and I don't know the girl with the nice pink shirt. I don't know anything about her. But, like, if, if people who are dysfunctional are viewing your relationship, well, they're never really going to understand it, and I don't, I don't need that part of the internet to have opinions about something because they won't even know. But if you get people who are already in good relationships and they're healthy, they'll be able to have really good relationship conversations with you and your partner. So I think one of the dilemmas is that this is content because it's dysfunctional. You know what I mean? Healthy relationships, if you're watching like couples that are successful, they're not getting, in my opinion, the kinds of views or the kinds of like clickbaity titles that like, look at Kyla's title as Destiny triggers a relationship feud. Darius is going to be a father. Like, I get it. We're in like clickbaity part of YouTube where, you know, we're being critical of people's relationships. But the ones that are dysfunctional are the ones we can be critical of. You know what I mean? It's, it's harder to make content about healthy relationships. So like my relationship doesn't have a place in this sphere because it's it's doing its thing, right? What a bizarre cope. Like, the answer is, I'm just not comfortable with people talking about relationship because it feels kind of weird. I don't want to hear people comment on it. That's like the start and stop of her thought. Like, everything else built around that is such a bizarre cope. Like, well, I don't want people that are unhealthy, like, commenting on my relationship. Like, why would you care? Who the fuck cares? People are probably commenting on your relationship now, regardless. Anybody is going to have. Like, the fact that you even announced, she did a whole marriage video, I think, where she put, like, a gown on and everything to simulate what she looked like. Like, what do you mean you don't want people to tell you about it? Like, the, the reality is just like, Generally, we just don't want people speculating on, making fun of, talking about, especially if we have like problems in our relationships too, because then you feel like self-conscious about it, you feel kind of shitty, it's just weird, right? There's nothing wrong with that, but just like, just say that. All this other weird thing about like, well, I don't want people that are unhealthy than me. Like, who cares? Like, this is such a weird. So again, remember that we're in a sphere where people are dysfunctional. So Darius and... Um, Zena trying to put down like boundaries around the relationship and work is it's so hard. And so that's really the issue, especially if they're not on the same page in terms of the relationship. Now, Zena says, and I don't know if she says in these clips, because I watched this whole thing, but basically that her and Darius did agree on what they wanted. They just don't know how to make it happen. Monogamy can look different for everyone. You could be monogamish or monogamous. You can have a monogamous relationship where you do finances together, you tell each other everything, or you can do monogamy in a way where you're like, I never look at your bank account. Every relationship is different. You can't just say, I'm poly and I'm open or I'm she did not say she didn't want people talking about her relationship. She said healthy relationships don't get clicks. You aren't listening and are triggered. Your relationship. Well, they're never really going to understand. Okay, so again, the problem is, is like when your relationship is also content, like one of the reasons why my partner and I aren't online together is because like, I don't want my relationship to be content as much as I talk about my relationship and maybe in the future that will change. But she said, I don't want my relationship to be content. The problem is like where you are on the internet, right? And what kind of an audience will talk about it? Like when Jordan Peterson and Tammy- What kind of audience is gonna talk about my relationship? They talk about their marriage. Their audience is looking at them like a very successful marriage. They're very excited. But if my relationship was being ostracized by this panel, it would just be a bunch of dysfunctional people, Kyla. I don't want dysfunctional people talking about my relationship. Excluded. Who's looking at my relationship. And again, I don't know the girl with glasses, so I don't know anything about her. And I don't know the girl with the nice pink shirt. I don't know anything about her. But like if, if people who are dysfunctional are viewing your relationship, well, they're never really gonna understand it. And I don't, I don't need that part of the internet to have opinions about something because they won't even know. She doesn't want other parts of the internet to have opinions about her relationship. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You're, what is the opposite of being triggered? You think I'm triggered and so you're triggering yourself? She did, none of this is, oh, healthy relationships don't get clicks. None of what she just said there implied that. What she's implying is she wants to shield her her relationship from pr probably the same criticism that she gives other people's relationships, which is, by the way, which is totally fine, but just say that. I don't want my relationship to be content with other people. I don't want other people milking my shit for views. I don't want people criticizing it or saying shit. That's totally fine. That's A-OK. -okay. I just don't know why you'd cope or hide it with like all these other weird kind of platitudes. 
But if you get people who are already in good relationships and they're healthy, they'll be able to have really good relationship conversations with you and your partner. So I think one of the dilemmas is that this is content because it's dysfunctional. You know what I mean? Healthy relationships, if you're watching like couples that are successful, they're not getting, in my opinion, the kinds of views or the kinds of like clickbaity titles that like, look at Kyla's title is Destiny Triggers a Relationship Feud. Darius is going to be a father. Like, I get it. We're in like clickbaity part of YouTube. We're, you know, we're- Like there's so many clickbaity titles you can make about like Britney's relationship right now. But I mean like, it's just, but I mean like, yeah. I don't know. I just don't know what just say like, oh, I don't want people. I don't like the idea that people are commenting like on my relationship public. That's, there's nothing wrong with that to feel that way. But it's kind of funny to pretend otherwise. Being critical of people's relationships, but the ones that are dysfunctional are the ones we can be critical of. You know what I mean? It's, it's harder to make content about healthy relationships. So like my relationship doesn't have a place in this sphere. Like that's the biggest cope I've ever heard in my entire life. Like I'm literally moving across the planet for a person that you've known for a f like a few months or whatever. You don't think people can make content out of that? There's so much, con the idea that nobody would have anything to say, especially because when you criticize, why do you think people criticize my relationship so much? Because I criticize other people's relationships. When you're in the business of criticizing other people's relationships, there's a million things that people could say to like criticize relationships, yeah. To pretend that like you're above it when one, that's your job, or to pretend that like nobody would have anything to say when there's tons of things people would say is wacky and wacky and wacky, like come on because it's it's doing its thing, right? So again, remember that we're in a sphere where people are dysfunctional. So Darius and um, Zena trying to put down like boundaries around the relationship and work is it's so hard. And so that's really the issue, especially if they're not on the same page in terms of the relationship. Now, Zena says, and I don't know if she says in these clips, because I watched this whole thing, but basically that her and Darius did agree on what they wanted. They just don't know how to make it happen. Monogamy can look different for everyone. You could be monogamish or monogamous. You can have a monogamous relationship where you do finances together, you tell each other everything, or you can do monogamy in a way where you're like, I never look at your bank account. Every relationship is different. You can't just say I'm poly and I'm open or I'm monogamous and have people go, I know exactly what that means. No, we all come from different backgrounds and cultures. You have got to negotiate specifics. And that takes a long time. I think I heard Zena say she thinks Darius might be her one and only like forever. No, I'm gonna call it right now. And I mean this in the nicest way possible. This is not your one and forever. You are better than this. You are worth more than this. Even Darius, he has so much growing to do. He could be better than this. But right now, like this is not healthy. This is dysfunctional. And I'm if curious you how she thinks she has the answer when one bitch never had a conversation with me to begin with. Don't even know who this bitch is. I'm just now hearing she married somebody after like a month of knowing them and moved across the globe. Bitch, you don't tell me what the f*** is healthy for me. You don't tell me who is my one and only. You don't make these decisions for me. You don't know me. You know what the f*** I put on the internet and what I allow you to know. You don't know me, bitch. That's true, but like, I think because of the things you said, that, it's like pretty obvious just, that like your relationship style and your understanding of yourself and what you want is like incredibly unhealthy. I think most people could probably see that. I don't think you need to be like a psychic. Okay, that, at the end of the day, I take accountability for things that this I This has to nothing change. to do with taking accountability. I don't know what that even means in this context. There's just an analysis of like, do we think these two people have a healthy or unhealthy relationship? Right, but if I say, for example, I'm open-minded, just because I'm naturally monogamous, that doesn't mean I'm not open to, which I already did try, and I can try again. I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm not open to stepping into other subcultures and trying new things. I'm very much open to that. But that doesn't I, sound I, like, hold on, that's not what you're, that's not what you're saying, though. You're not saying, like, I've done monogamous in the past, and I think now I'm kind of, like, willing to try something else. What it sounds like you're saying, or I'm sorry, what you are saying is, I would prefer a monogamous relationship. I really want that, but I found another person, so I'm going to flex or bend on this particular thing to see if I can make that work. It's a different approach. One, okay. like, the first would be healthy. The second sounds like a really big compromise that you're making for some unknown reason. Because I like the person that I'm with. I like this person. I know that there are monogamous men out there. I'm not an idiot. Obviously, there are pl there's plenty of men that are either religious or whatever reason that they're extremely monogamous. I did not actively go seek out those men, did I? No. I ended up attracted to somebody. I got to know this person, and I decided, okay, there are things that I can bend with in this relationship, and he's doing the same thing. I don't think there's anything wrong or unhealthy about changing a few little things. They're not talking about 
you're not talking about changing or bending a few little things. You're talking about making a dramatic change in an area that you probably wouldn't want to compromise with in any other relationship style. And you're doing it after meeting a person for a month or two. I might meet a girl that checks off a ton of boxes for me, um, you know, but she might also be a serial killer and smoke crack, right? And like, cool. for me to be like, well, you know, I we get along in a lot of other ways and, you know, I've never actually dated a serial killer before. Like, fuck it. Like, maybe I can try. Like, most people look at me like, oh, hold on. It sounds like you're jumping into something new. You're making a really bad decision. Maybe you should have a better understanding of like where your hard lines are. That would probably be a more healthy way to approach it. Makes it makes sense if right now I was saying, oh yes, I'm in a polygamous relationship. I never said that. What I did say is in the early stage, I would like things to be monogamous so I could build the trust and see if this is something I can, you know, step my toes in and conform to. Therefore, thinking of the longevity of it, thinking in the future, if this is something he absolutely wants to do and I really like this person and I'm with this person, I want to try it out too. And if it doesn't work, then we handle it at that point i'm not saying yeah okay i know him for like two months now that right now i'm just oh yeah just fuck who you want let's be polygamous and i don't even know what that even is yet and i think that's the take that people are taking is i'm saying right now that for some reason i'm saying right now i'm conforming to these ideals the issue is that i'm not yet i'm willing sure, to sure i understand what you're saying i'm th just for, from the space you're coming from the spaces we inhabit online and even like who i am like Monogamous relationships are like 98% the norm, and it is incredibly rare that a person would go into a monogamous relationship thinking that like maybe they'll change that down the line. Like this is like a style of doing a relationship that's pretty important to have set mm -hmm. right in the beginning and to be flexible on it early on in a way that makes it sound like you're only doing it to appease your partner is like the least healthy way to approach a relationship, which is exactly what it sounds like is happening. Because you said it yourself, it sounds like you said you don't wanna fuck around in a relationship ever but like maybe you'd be okay with your partner doing it like that sounds like a form of appeasement basically i mean it's just that i that's no it's more like okay i know that i could like i could find other men attractive like i i i am we're both flirtatious with people he knows who i'm flirtatious with to an extent i just don't take it too far but like do i actively think i want to go fuck like i just don't i'm not experienced wanting to step outside of a relationship when i'm in when I'm into somebody, you know? Could I be that way, like, in the future? Like, in, in my 40s, maybe? Like, I've always been interested in, like, swingers and stuff. Like, I've read the books. I've watched that type of stuff. I have swinger friends. So it's always been interesting to me. Yeah, that's different. But by that point, you have kids. You're married. You have this bond with each other. You can step out and be swingers. I think that's, I think that's pretty much cool. But as of right now, like... Sure, but I yeah, again, you're, like, way off. Like, that's a I'm way just, yeah, different thing that we're talking about. Yeah, no, it's just like me personally, if men can em unemotionally fuck people, maybe, I don't know, just I know I can't, like I have to be. Sure, but then I don't know why you wouldn't just like say right now, like I just, I'm looking for a monogamous relationship. That's like a totally fair boundary to set and it's totally understandable and it'd be a billion times healthier for you that because not only are you, you're obviously still doing a whole bunch of self-discovery and figuring out like shit around yourself. You just got out of one major relationship like, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you're still learning about yourself. Why would you compromise on such a massive thing right off the bat? Like you're setting yourself up for like an impossible to succeed scenario. You're setting yourself up for failure right, right immediately. I mean, as right now, things are monogamous, so what's the issue? If in the future he wants to step out and we have that conversation and I'm learning more and more. I, just, I don't know why you would even start on a foundation where that's like a future conversation that you're setting yourself up for. Not to mention, to be totally honest, that's like... Though. That's what I'm trying to make people like I actually I'm open to that being okay They're just when I say I'm open to it being okay, but I'm gonna remain monogamous That's where people like have this issue and they're like, okay, you're you're compromising. You're doing this. You're doing that Just because I'm deciding that I don't want to fuck other people that that would be my decision Not that I wouldn't be allowed to not that I can't it's just I would just be like nah, I'm straight But do you I don't see what's wrong with that? That it's not fulfilling if I don't have sex with other people as well in order to have let because it, okay I don't know how much you care I don't I don't, I don't again I'm not a teacher okay I don't, sure listen I, yeah the realistic thing is that one-sided open relationships are insane and they'll never work because they're always going to drive resentment between two ordinary people you have to be living an extraordinary lifestyle or have an extraordinary amount of experience to know that that's something that you'd want there's going to be days where you're home alone and you feel resentful because your partner's out 
attacking somebody. There's going to be times where you're fighting with your partner and you see that they're chatting with a girl that pisses you off. There's going to be times when a guy might hook up with two or three girls that happen to be white bitches or something that are totally different than you that's going to make you feel resentful. The idea, and you're going to be stuck at home not being able to do anything in the meantime. That type of ultra one-sided relationship is going to drive so much resentment. There is no possible way that that would be sustainable. That's why even in the red pill community, the way they talk about men being able to sustain these styles of relationships, it's only the types of men that have massive power imbalances over the women that they're with because those women could never score a man like that monogamously, right? If I wanted to go and juggle 10, you know, 20 year old girls from a community college, I could do it, but there's no way that I'm juggling like a Melina or juggling some other woman that is like on my level and telling her that she's got to stay home and do nothing. That's an insane proposition. And I just don't understand how most people can't see that that's going to drive that unimaginable amount of resentment so early on in a relationship. It, it, I've never in my entire life have I ever seen, ever heard of these relationship styles working, even in the short term. I've never heard it. I've never heard these relationship styles working even for a couple months b before, let alone like being stable over years. In my opinion. Hmm. Also, it's just such an easy, better way to start on this platform. But like, hey, we have like the same, like similar boundaries, similar restrictions, and we kind of like do things that make each other happy. Like, why introduce okay, more people, want... more partners, more complications? Sorry, go. I, I've explained this already. I literally sh cut somebody off for Darius. All right, I went on a date with a really rich, hot ass Asian dude who is monogamous, who is all these things. I didn't know. I, I wasn't interested in that. I like Darius. And that's just the issue that people have. I don't care if in the future I decide or we decide like, OK, we're going to step out and I want to not step out. Maybe later on when I'm older, I will, because maybe if I'm like 40 or 50 and I'm not feeling good because what I got wrinkles and a 28 year old dude wants to fuck with me and he's hot and we're both open. OK, then maybe then when we get to that point, maybe then I will then practice, you know, sleeping around or actually swinging. But as of right now, like I don't have these issues where I think- Sure, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that ordinarily in the early stages of a relationship, the things that you're thinking about are like, do we have similar communication styles? Do we like going to the same types of date places? Is he a vegan and I'm not? Am I gonna, and then like advanced relationships which are like, can we live together and tolerate each other? Do his parents like me? Um, you know, do I get along with his friends? Does he seem embarrassed or does he do weird things when we go in public where it doesn't seem like we get along well, right? These are like the questions that you have with partners. This idea of thinking like, well, in the future, am I gonna be open to us swinging and him? To, these are like such out there bizarre questions when the fundamental parts of your relationship aren't even remotely resolved yet that I don't even know why you'd be spending any brain power on them at all. There's like so many other things you have to solve. Because that's the only thing that we don't really, that's the only thing that's on the table that's questionable. Everything else, like everything else that he does, everything else that we talk about obviously is what's got me so attracted to him is same, like we have the same principles for everything else. Same mannerisms, same, same thought process. That's the only thing that's on the table is whether or not should, if he wants to be open or whatever, or if, he's going to remain monogamous. That's literally the only discussion that we've been having for days, apparently. I mean, you guys, Nothing. you don't, you have no idea what you guys are like, though, right? How, you've seen each other collectively for what, three days in real life? Four or five, and now I'm going to go over there for two weeks, but we talk. And that's Yeah, so like, I mean, that's, it's good to keep spending time equating with each other, but like, you guys are like barely, if even dating right now. Like, you guys are at the beginning, beginning, beginning stages. Like, there right, are people that go on dates right. with each other for longer than, than you guys have even known each other before they've actually declared themselves boyfriend, girlfriend, or actually dating. So, I'm just saying that, yeah. Right, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I keep saying in the early stages, of course, that's why I'd want exclusive, uh, exclusivity because I just want to make sure like I'm not wasting my time going in and all that because how I am as a person is I'm not like I just said I cut people off I'm talking to one person I have tunnel vision I want to make sure that I'm making a right decision so of course after spending what three or four months down the line I want to make sure that I'm not wasting my time that's why I ask like exclusivity or monogamy first before just letting a guy walk all over me and do whatever he wants and then it doesn't even work in the end anyway and I just look stupid. Like I already did that with Sneeko. Why the fuck would I do that again? Sure, I understand. And that. Everybody, everybody around me pushed that nigga on me when I wasn't even I didn't even care about that in the first place. I was going to LA, I was working, I was making my money. And they're like, Oh, I think he would be good for you. I think he would be good for you. This is the type of man you need. You need a masculine man that'll tell you when to shut up and da 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 da. And that's what pushed me into that fucking situation for me to get what manipulated to accept him sleeping around and not knowing even my position and just being like, Okay, I guess I'm just on rotation. Sure. I understand what you're thinking. I'm just saying that like for ninety nine percent of people, like these questions of like 
like open relationships and swinging clothes. Like this is not anything. Normal people don't think about this and anywhere near the beginning of these relationships. It's just so much extra shit. Um, when it seems like you still aren't even 100% sure like what you want in a relationship yet. Like, do you know, do you have in your mind what an ideal relationship even looks like for you or? Yeah. What, what like, what does that look like? What does a day-to-day -day look like for a relationship? Inuyasha and Kagome. Okay, well, doesn't that anime end with one of them dying? I have no idea. No, they actually um, have children. They get married and have children, yeah. Gotcha. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, well. But no, I do know what I, I have an idea of a relationship that I want. That's why I'm always open to talking about things and like discussing it. And that becomes, I guess, an issue or it could be stressful because I like to clarify things along the way. That's just how I am. Like I overanalyze and I clarify things ahead of time because I think if it's structured and everything is aligned the right way, then it can go smoothly. But yeah. Okay. Not to like also be a Debbie Downer. Okay. I'm only giving this because I'm a frank and blunt person. Okay. But typically the first few months of a relationship are also like sunshine and rainbows. Like you're honeymooning super hard. It allows you to look over a lot of long-term incompatibility, even medium-term compatibility problems. Um, you have your blinders on to a lot of other negative aspects of the relationship. But if what? That's what I'm trying to avoid and I'm No, glad that's hold on, that's not what I'm saying. First of all, these are almost unavoidable. It's human nature, okay? Number one, but number two, the issue is if you're already running into significant problems, like if a girl or a guy came to me and she or he was like, listen, um, I've got this issue. Sometimes my boyfriend shouts at me or like my girlfriend is like really jealous or possessive. The first question I usually ask is like, oh cool, well how long have you guys been dating? If somebody tells me like, oh, you know, it's been about two months, my answer is always like, okay, bye, break up. Like you're done, you're over, like at that point. Like if you're already running into big problems like a month or two in, Honestly, really, it's like before six months. If you're running into big problems before six months, like okay, find somebody else because like this ain't it. If you're if during if the honeymooning phase is already incredibly tumultuous, it's your shit is ultra fucked, in my opinion. But I mean, I people got married and they're still together, so I'm just like you what? Sorry, your your thing cut out. I was saying my people got mar got married like they got married and I'm not gonna say pe who, but personal people in my life, for example, started out this way. And that's kind of what they always suggested to me is like, look, stop going in with the sunshiny attitude. You need to get through the turbulence first, figure out if this is, is if this going to be compatible, if you guys are going to compromise and come to middle ground in order to decide if you're going to be in a healthy relationship. And they're married with kids now. And like, they've been together and everything is now sunshiny, but it wasn't in the beginning at all. So I don't know. I, I think I just look at it that way based on like, what okay. I'm seeing. Diana, I, my, all of my anecdotes point in exactly the opposite direction, but at the end of the day, all we have are our stories. So you could be right and I could be wrong, but I'd put a lot of money on my, but who knows? Yeah. So what are you suggesting? Uh, I'm just here to learn and to listen. Mm. But also my general instructions, especially for somebody that just got out of a tumultuous relationship, uh, usually what I would say is it's really good to spend a little bit of time on your own, figuring out like, who am I? I spent two years on my own in a prison cell figuring out who the fuck I am. I don't know so how much you can figure out about yourself in a prison cell, okay? Unless you're converting to Islam or something. No, a lot. When you're alone, locked in a cell with no one else to talk to but yourself, you have to know who you are. You That's have great. To be and you know what? Two years in prison can prepare you really well for another two years in prison. But I don't know if that prepares you for what life on the outside looks like. I don't know if that prepares you for healthy relationships or or other things going forward, right? Like tells me what I want as a person. Like I learned who I want as a person, who I want to be. That's why I'm actively still, like I have a lot to change about myself, which I know there's still problems and things I have to slowly work through. I'm 27, so there's hardwired issues that I can't just change overnight. It is going to take an exponential amount of time for me to convert and change these things. For example, like that's why I like watching your content when I first met you on Fresh Fit. Even though I like a lot of the red pill stuff, you said a lot of things, which I told you at Moshi, you said a lot of things that I'm just like, this is what I like. Like, I like what you're saying, da da da. And it piqued my interest to start watching your content. And I don't watch streamers. You're the only streamer aside from my ex, which I only watch because I mod his shit. But you're the only streamer that I would actually watch and listen to. Mm hmm. Okay. Outside of my work. 
And to be fair, I mean, I would get in trouble being on my phone when I'm supposed to be working there behind, uh, behind the scenes because I would be watching your streams and not watching the regurgitated girls saying the same thing over and over and getting checked. And I wouldn't be watching. All right, listen, I mean, I listen, I said what I'm going to say. I don't know what I'm going to say, but... <laughs> I just think that if things are worked out appropriately, mind you, of course, me not blowing up as toxic and crazy as I am prone to do oh. and used to, that wait, wait, wait. they're- Hold on, I'm sorry, one second. Wait. No? She a baddie, she's showing her skin. She's looking like deli. Oh, jelly. Okay, sorry. I don't understand how am I drawing how am I drawing nine hundred watts on my streaming PC UPS? Is what is my what is my streaming PC drawing right now for power? Does hardware will hardware monitor tell me the wattage? We're saying it's UPS battery. Whatever that means. Is it? That's what they're they're all saying. They're saying it's a U UPS battery. I can't tell if it's the load. Somebody said my breaker blue, but I checked the breaker, the breaker's fine. But my UPS is sitting at 882 watts. It's a 900, so I'm guessing it's beeping because of the load. What? They're saying disconnect a monitor. Yeah, but I don't know what's drawing 900 watts from my... Unless my gaming PC is hooked up for this one. Maybe. Hold on, one sec. Did I reverse? I'm about to start rapping to this beat. She a baddie, she's showing her panty. She's shaking like jelly. It's working in the deli. I'm unplugging something. Wait, no, I'm not. Uh, okay, hold on. Give me a sec. Um, a big issue that you and Darius have as well is you guys keep pretending you're joking or playing into bits or whatever when you guys are being like 50-50 serious joking the entire time too, which is not, I don't know if you guys do that in your personal conversations or how much that carries over into those fights or not, but. Yeah, but I'm honest. I'll say I turn it up like 10%, but I'll still say I still have an issue with the situation. I just turn it up a little bit more for content purposes, but I definitely say if I have an issue, just like when we had dinner, I said, yeah, I was pissed, but I turned it up like 10, 20%. Why not? Okay. Him, I don't think, that's why I said earlier when I said just stop coping, just be who you are, and just be honest about it, instead of coping or trying to find these excuses, just straight up say this is who you are. That's different. Once you come and take accountability and you acknowledge, then maybe you can make changes if you want to make changes, but you also don't have to make changes for anybody but yourself. Okay. Anything else? Which I, mean, I think is fair. Um, kind of. I mean, that was kind of a meaningless statement. Like, I mean, sometimes we have to change for partners depending on what they want us to change. Other times the changes are too great to bear and it's not going to be a good relationship. So it just really just depends on what you're talking about. So. Well, yeah, like when I was saying, um, I guess we were bringing up like the romance, like the, the drinks at night type thing again. And obviously most people would agree with you and me on that. Like that's just, that's not casual. That is typically leads, that is the purpose of trying to have sex or whatever, whatever. In his world, it's, oh, no, I, I can do that without doing that. Like, okay, that's just cope. Like, just say you're doing it, and it's on the table, but you're not expecting it. Just be honest. And things would sound a lot easier because it sounds like you're being truthful, especially when telling me things. Just be truthful. Okay. I yeah. may want to flip this chick if it's on the table. She might not even be that interested in me. Sure. Boom. That's so much easier to accept than, oh, no, it's just casual. And then something happens, and I didn't expect it to happen. Now that's an issue because now you're trying to play. Like, I don't like like that for any person. Sure. I agree with that 100%. I've had those issues crop up where I don't tire if somebody fucks around or whatever, but, like, don't be fucking retarded about it or don't pretend you don't understand what's happening. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back to this, okay? Okay. Your camera is heaps blurred. Oh, I'm trying a new angle, guys. You don't like it? Mm -hmm. 